Hey, good morning, guys. So, like Peter was already mentioning in a video which I gave to him when I was actually on site in Tennessee doing some spot welding for a customer. One of the things I found out was <clears throat> the customer of mine wanted to weld RFID tags onto beer kegs. And I've done that, I've trained uh, numbers welders to do so. Uh, doesn't take too much of a skill set other than holding the gun, having a good ground, making sure the fusion is going to be made proper and to wear proper safety equipment with it and to use some yeah, regular human skills for it and common sense which quite frankly a lot of people do not understand is quality is important when you do weld you cannot fail on your welds constantly because it costs a manufacturer or the company I work for a lot of money a beer keg alone costs over a hundred dollars per beer keg so when we did the welding I did the first welding training for them and I did that with a YSE welder which they had bought through a welding company here in the US but um, they're based out of Texas and problem there is not every US company which sells welders should be sell selling those units uh, mainly service related um, selling a unit everybody can do it everybody can do it in the garage um, or from home there's no problem with that the problem comes in when you actually need warranty issues like when we went actually over to Memphis I spent three weeks in Memphis training those folks making sure that the process is pretty much broken down to the point that we were working with six people two welders and we were completing around eight to nine hundred beer kegs per day in eight hour shifts uh, the eight hour shifts were breaking down into uh, four parts um, First we had a 15 minute break, then we had an hour lunch break, and later on another 15 minute break, which is very typical for uh, warehouse work. Uh, a lot of people are surprised about it, but that's how it is. Um, that warehouse uh, where we worked in was very hot. We had 120 degrees on average in the facility. And we had floor fans running, but still, it was still after all 120 degrees plus. So. We worked with that welder, the YSE um, welder, which did a good job. The company paid a lot of money and we were just two days in when the welder failed. Um, I took the welder apart. I'd done that before that I took it apart down here in Florida when it failed beforehand, but it was only a trigger switch which cost only like three bucks. So. I ordered the switch, replaced it in the gun, and we were able to do, move on because the consultant company, which sold the welder to the company, couldn't supply the switch, which literally cost less than two dollars if you buy it yourself directly from China. They couldn't supply it, not even within weeks terms, they couldn't supply it. Same was for the welding tips. Um, the welding tips, uh, which that dot welder, uh, used were a ridiculous amount of price and they were not available when you called up the company uh, it took them more than three weeks before they can actually ship a unit over it took me to copy that by doing it myself buying from China a pure copper rod chopping it down grinding it down on the grinding wheel and the grinder Less than a week, and I could, and I did sell it to the company for a lot less. Nevertheless, the YSE welder, which also is manufactured in Asia, um, I'm not 100% sure if it is manufactured 
actually in Taiwan or if it is actually in China. Nevertheless, we need an alternative. I talked with YSE directly, tried to buy it from them because it was a simple uh, unit, did the functionality we needed and to increase productivity, but they refused selling it to me. And so I was forced to look to a different company and I only needed one function, which is really the spot welding function, nothing else. This is manufacturing process. So when you manufacture, you're looking for a welding device which costs only a certain amount and supplies only that functionality for exactly that purpose, nothing else. I found a welder in form from Shanda. Um, they're actually also based mainland China and the welder cost half, less than half the cost of the YSE welder. It is a TIG welder, not a DOT welder, but it has a spot functionality. Uh, the consumables are much easier to available because you can just go over to your uh, gas supplier or welding supply store and you just buy it there. You just go inside and good is. Takes you a trip from the warehouse to the shop and back less than two hours. Where the YSE one, which use highly specialized tools, custom tips, are not widely available. So whenever you needed a tip, you had to either already have it or you have to pre-order it, which you have to calculate a couple weeks in advantage. That's not an option if you do a uh, production welding. So then we start working in Tennessee on the facility, trying to crank out the 900 plus kegs where we were actually go going for a thousand plus. Uh, we fell short because of numerous reasons, but we got very close with 940, what was one of the highest numbers we had um, before we actually ran into a shortage of the RFID tax and so we had to wait for the next shipment to come in. Anyhow, I ran the Chandra and the YSE next to each other. Both performed fairly well. Problem is when you do dot welding you use a lot higher amperage than you, when you do a tick welding, spot welding functionality. So that being said, when the YSE broke, I needed a replacement for that because the welding, um, the company which sold me that YSE welder, which is down in Texas, first it took them days to talk with the manufacturer in China. Uh, we're talking literally here four days before they came back and said, oh yeah, okay, we cover it under warranty, but you have to ship it to us. Okay, boxed it up, got it with UPS, shipped out to them. Um, we are now in the fourth week in and we're still waiting for the unit to be shipped back to the facility. That means one welding station is completely down. So, me working with Peter Ziller, and hi Peter, you still have a couple uh, files to actually take a look at for me if you can actually do that on the plasma cutter for me. Anyhow, so remembering that, that I talked with him about welders, where, where something is available, it directly dawned on me that, yeah, there's a company right here in the US, um, not manufactured in the US, but manufactured over in Italy company here in the US is called HTP. HTP is selling uh, their welding units very high quality here in the United States and you have a representation here in the United States so if you need something you can just pick up the phone and call them. They are in central time zone so pretty much no matter if you are on the East Coast or you are actually on the West Coast you can get a hold of them within the same day and you can get answers within the same day. So I picked up the phone, called them, and even their website said the HTP is right now currently out of stock. I knew that they always have, when you're lucky, one or two units still sitting in the shelf being pre-reserved for another customer. Or they came back or they're for emergency purposes 
like when a customer has one unit which fails, they need to have a spare one on hand where they can ship that out while they're getting the other one back and being looked up and fixed and whatsoever. So I talked with them and going with uh, my company back and forth and they agreed up on the price and the price was three times higher than the Chandra which I got from China which would take seven business days plus customs plus uh, shipment delays so all in all two weeks to get there versus an HTP welder which was right in Chicago available uh, was in stock ready to be shipped out and yeah 40, 48 hours later I had it in the warehouse unboxed it assembled it and an hour later I was actually back to welding so sometimes price is money and money is determined in two factors can you get, resume your production quickly can you also call that company back quickly if something breaks HDP is right here in the US so you don't have to wait for somebody to wake up in Europe which is most of the time six plus hours ahead of us so you better get up very early in the morning to catch them before they actually go home um, they go home normally at 5 p.m. latest so you better try to catch them before 4 p.m. Uh, otherwise, it gets, otherwise it gets very slim to get a hold of them anyhow so I put both welders aside welded with them pretty much for a week and a half and they both performed flawlessly without any problems um, yeah both my welders were not highly skilled welders so there were a couple of flaws but none broke any of the kegs where with the dot welding methods versus a tick spot welding method um, back here in Florida they actually burned through the kegs with the dot welding method because we had to use a much higher amperage in order to get the thin sheet metal welded onto the beer keg where with the tick welding method as a spot welding we could do that with a much lower amperage and we never busted a keg even though when we had an issue that the gun was not hold in the right angle and the spark was bigger than expected and somebody bumped the beer keg while reloading the belt and, and, and whatnot still we didn't burn a single hole into any beer keg and we got over uh, 6,000 beer kegs done um, the time I've, I've been there um, they're still working on it they're still working there and so end of the story is if you need quality and if you're doing something on a production scale do not cheap out all right sorry guys battery died out so what I wanted to say is when you decide to get a welder no matter if it's a dot, spot, tick, mic, stick and you want to do production with it especially if you do production focus only on a unit which just supplies that exact functionality um, Cost, being cost effective, meaning all the supply parts, meaning torch, handle, wires, um, rods, filler rods, um, wire, all that has to be widely accessible for you so that when you run into the situation that you're running low on supplies, that you can get those supplies quickly and affordably. Um, the other main thing is when you have the option to buy something here in the United States, make sure that these products are really good. If, like the YSE welder I was talking about, yeah, it's a US company selling it, but that company doesn't have the staffing or the support on site to fix stuff if you're not really on site at that um, state or even city. So if you're out of state, there's already your problem. You have to ship the stuff back and forth to actually get it repaired. And most often the times uh, you end up 
losing production time which costs you a lot more money than going out and buying a welder which costs you a thousand dollars two thousand dollars more just to give you a quick rundown the YSE e welder was charged to the company for around twenty five hundred dollars two thousand five hundred dollars for a welder which only lasted before it broke I would say six months maybe seven months out of which it was only used for four months so four months um, it was used on a pretty much Monday to Friday daily base um, the Shanda which is a lot cheaper so you can actually buy multiple ones that one runs for around 1200 bucks if you buy multiple units uh, you can get the price even lower where an HTP costs you around three thousand dollars but the quality is by far higher it's far superior to in comparison to a YSE which is pretty much a direct competitor where the Shander it only has that one functionality for spot welding it doesn't offer anything else like the HTP inverter take 221 which we use in Memphis which use the same CK9 tick torch with a 53 N head uh, 332 tungsten 2 percent the welder costs 3000 plus in the shipping and, and whatnot it costs more but that welder is a by far better quality if you want to use that welder not only for a production environment if you just want to use it for a production environment where you only need the spot function and nothing else you're actually cheaper to going out and go into a shander and buy multiple ones and you have spare on site where if one breaks you take one out of the warehouse or out of the shelf and just use that while the other one is being repaired you have to run those numbers but if you want to have a welder which is good in the field for you being a welder where you actually manufacture stuff with so you call yourself a welder and also maybe a metal fabricator then the only option is an HTP in my eyes because it is very high quality made in Italy um, there's hardly anything anymore made here in the United States which is sad even like a Miller uh, and now Hobart which we're manufacturing here in the United States um, they outsource to China now um, but make sure that when you talk to the staff which is selling you talk to the company not a middleman so if HTP sells something to you talk to them directly um, if you talk with Miller Electric talk to them directly make sure that they can supply you with the products you need for a long time so that they can guarantee you at least three years four years down the road you can still get all the consumables all the parts uh, the motherboard part inside the um, coolers the connectors the um, tips the whatever you need for it to make it work and take right that you get those parts down the road so don't just go out and buy the welder which is a lot more affordable let's take a shander for example it costs you like almost a third um, of what the HTP cost but at least the shander has all consumable parts widely available when it comes down to the internal side of the welder itself yes you have to talk to China mainland but me personally working with them um, I have a good relationship with them so far they can ship me another unit out directly from them to wherever I am within the United States no problem within less than two weeks is it ideal no but I can work with that where 
if I work at a customer side where there's a high production turnout required every day, I cannot rely on a Shanda and have to actually go against them and go with an HTP or something else. I can't really verify if Lincoln is still US made and whatnot. Um, most of them they claim they are, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the older units they were, so I'm not sure what, what, what's going on with Lincoln right now, but make sure that when you go out and you buy a welder that you buy the proper welder. If you're just a hobbyist or an artist, um, like we have other people which just do welding partially, meaning they only weld for like a day out of the week really with that welder, then you do not have to spend the X amount of thousands of dollars to get one of the high production uh, line uh, machines like a big HTP inverter tech 221. But if you do, please talk to them, call them, call Lincoln, call ASAP, talk to them actually and challenge them by really talking to them and say, hey, what's the warranty on it? Um, I'm using it for a, fa a fabrication process. I'm a professional. What's the warranty on it? Uh, what's really covered by the warranty? How is the warranty being executed down the road? Um, can I get all my um, supplies from you guys as well or even locally through other manufacturers? Is that a void of warranty? Make sure that that all is covered before you actually pull the trigger and buy something. If you're a hobbyist, look at Lance, for example, Chucky 2009. He ran through the Everlast, he ran through the HTP, he ran through the Hobart, he ran through a couple other manufacturers. Um, there are a bunch out there you can choose from, but those units, most of them which he reviewed, and he even said it himself, they are not for production. They're good if you're a home hobbyist, if you do it, like as I said earlier, like a day out of the week that you actually weld. And that, that's meaning time-wise. So if you only weld eight hours out of the week, you are not a real welder. You are more of an artist, a hobbyist from the categorization. If you are a welder where you work and weld at least 30 hours a week with your welder, then and only then, then you know, okay, you're a welder, you need something which is very high quality. So go out and buy the best you can buy for your bucks. And do, again, do your research. So hopefully that clears everything up. Um, I have a bunch of new videos coming up soon. Uh, I finally got back to Florida. So this is actually the wall of my house. I'm actually in the backyard right now and it's still dribbling a little bit rain coming down but um, I have all the parts together now um, to actually do a euro conversion all right guys so I have a bunch more videos coming up uh, especially on the euro conversion which I'm gonna do on a well pack 100 um, so please like and subscribe and sorry for the video being so long but there were a lot of information which I have to share so that everybody understands what's really involved and why I did the decision I did with moving with HTP as an alternative welder versus uh, the YSE. So, I hope you guys understand. It took a little longer than expected. So, again, thanks guys. Have a good one.